the best way to walk to prevent falling. Is there a way to walk that actually can prevent falls? For seniors, for people over the age of 65, statistics tell us that there's a one in four chance of falling each year that you're alive. So walking in a way that can prevent falls is really important to keeping you mobile and independent. There are many problems that can cause someone to fall that, that occur with walking. If someone is shuffling, if someone is not lifting their, their feet high enough off the ground, or if they're walking with a very wide base gait, those three things can definitely lead to falls. If you're doing those three things, you're, you have an increased chance of having a fall each year. So to understand those three problems, we need to look first at what a normal walking pattern looks like. So when you watch someone walking normally, you're gonna notice a lot of things. So first of all, looking at the person's posture, their head is upright, they're looking forward. Now that's very important. Our body is not meant to have the head looking down or to be leaning forward. So if you're, if you're looking down or if you're leaning forward when you're walking, you're definitely throwing your balance off. Another thing that's important is arm movement. A normal human moves their arms reciprocally um, as they're walking. What that means is, as your right leg comes forward, your left arm is coming forward. Um, people that don't move their arms or who move their arms out of sequence, or if someone's carrying something, you're interfering with that arm movement. So why is that arm movement important? Is because that's how the body, when it's walking upright, counterbalances what the leg is doing. When your leg is moving forward, it actually throws your balance off. So your arm on the other side is moving to counteract that, that movement. And so that arm movement increases your balance. So one way that a lot of people can actually reduce their chance of falling is to get back in the habit of, of allowing their arms to move reciprocally as they're walking. In fact, the better your arm swing is, the more resistant you are to falling. So now let's look specifically at what the feet and the legs are doing when someone is walking. When someone walks, um, we, we dif differentiate it into two phases. There's the stance phase when the leg is in contact with the ground, and then there's the swing phase when the leg is moving forward. The way we walk is one foot has to be in contact with the ground while the other foot is moving. And that's different than running. In running, one foot is in contact with the ground, then both feet are off the ground, and then another foot is in contact with the ground. So walking is distinguished by when one foot is always in contact with the ground while you're moving forward. Um, so the first part of the stance phase is when the foot first comes in contact with the ground and that's called heel strike. So in a normal person, the heel strike occurs with the heel being the first point of contact. So the first big problem that people have that, that, that result in falling is they're not contacting the ground with their heel first. Instead, their toe is hitting first. So that toe strike is also called shuffling. And the reason that that's a problem is because the foot is not getting enough ground clearance to go over any kind of obstacle. So if there's something in the way and you're hitting with your toe first, you're going to trip over it. The way you prevent tripping is to hit with your heel first and then the foot comes down over whatever is in front of you, and it's a lot less likely that you'll stumble or trip on something. So as the foot um, completely comes flat, there's something that happens in the body which is called weight shift. Weight shift is when the person's body shifts over to the leg that you're standing on. A human being has to have weight shift. If you don't fully shift your weight over the leg that you're standing on, then you're shuffling. Then you're, you're walking with your feet very, very wide apart. Because in order for you to be completely balanced, 
all of your weight has to shift onto the leg that you're standing on. What you notice in a lot of people that are at risk for falls, a lot of older people, is they shift their weight less and less and less the older they get. Now, this is something that is correctable. You can practice shifting your weight. There's an activity that I recommend called single leg stance, where you practice standing on one leg with the other leg up. Practicing that exercise can actually improve your weight shift when you're walking and make your walking more stable. And that's why I think standing on one leg, practicing standing on one leg is actually the best way that you can, the best exercise that you can do to prevent falls. So um, as the person is, is shifting their weight over their leg, there's a third thing that happens. And, and what occurs is the leg that's swinging then comes in contact with the ground. So that leg then goes through the stance phase. So what happens normally is that the one foot lands right in front of the other foot. People walk normally with one foot in front of the other. If you were to draw a line uh, and the ground where someone's footsteps were, you would notice that a, a person without any problem walks almost completely along a line. Actually, most of us walk slightly to the sides of the line, but for the most part, it's one foot in front of the other. Now, if you look at an older person or a person that's having trouble with their walking, maybe someone who's had a stroke, you're gonna notice that most of them walk with their feet very wide apart. In other words, instead of their foot landing in front of the other foot, it's landing way off to the side. It can be a few inches to as much as one foot. It just depends on how bad someone's balance is. Now people do that because they feel unsteady, but actually by doing that, by walking with one foot off to one side, they're actually making themselves more unsteady and much more likely to fall. Why is that? Because if there's some obstacle in the way, if the ground is a little bit uneven or a little bit soft, if we're walking on grass or dirt, walking with our feet wide apart makes it much more likely to fall because we can't react to any kind of change as easily. When you're balanced, when you're putting all your weight over one leg and you're walking with one foot in front of the other, that makes it much more likely that if something disturbs your balance, you can cope with it. So the reason that people fall that don't walk with their foot, one foot in front of the other, is because they're not ready for any kind of change. So just to review, the, the problems that occur that result in falls, that, that increase your chance of falling, first of all, is not having an adequate heel strike. Not, not when the foot hits the ground, the heel is not the first thing that hits the ground. Now that's something that you can practice. You can tell yourself to, to try to walk with your heel hitting first because that will improve your balance. The, the next thing is not having an adequate weight shift. In other words, when you're walking, you're not putting your weight fully over the leg that's standing. And a great exercise to fix that is another video that I did, which is called the best exercise to improve your balance. And in that video, I show you how to stand, practice standing on one leg at a kitchen sink and repeating that over and over until your balance and your weight shift gets better. And then the third thing is not walking in, in tandem, not walking with your foot hitting in front of your other foot. So that's also something that that single leg uh, stance exercise can improve because as you're as you get better at shifting your weight over to one leg, it becomes a lot easier to put your foot in front of the other foot. But also just practicing that and telling yourself to practice that. If you feel safe, you can even practice that by walking heel to toe on a, on a tape line or on a balance beam. Those are great exercises to help you learn to walk more in tandem. Now, what happens if you can't do all these things? What happens if you, if you listen to this video and you think, I, I heard what this guy is saying, but I can't actually do this. I, my balance is not good enough. Well, there's two things. First of all, I'm gonna tell you a test that I always tell people because I've learned that most people are very resistant to the idea of a walker or a cane. So I tell them, I understand that you don't want a walker and cane. Let me ask you this question. When you go to the supermarket and you use a shopping cart, 
do you notice that when you use the shopping cart that you your walking is better that you feel more balanced and if they say oh yeah i feel a lot better i can walk better when i'm pushing the shopping cart then i tell them then you're making a mistake you probably need a rolling walker or a cane because if you had those you would actually walk more you would you would probably go out for walks and get a lot more activity because you'd feel safer when you walk but by you resisting using a walker or a cane what's happening is you're not getting as much opportunity to walk and that's going to make your walking and your balance decline even further so you know, we can't all walk around with shopping carts all day, but that's really why there are rolling walkers and four-wheeled walkers and canes is to help people be more steady so they can walk more. One way I always tell my clients to think about it is, I, I know most of them don't want to use a walker, but I say, you know, this this can be just temporary. If you, if right now, maybe you're only walking a few hundred feet a day because you're afraid of falling or because you are falling. So if you get a, a rolling walker or a three-wheeled walker or a four-wheeled walker and you start going for a walk of a mile every single day in just a few weeks your balance is going to be so much better your endurance your strength and your balance will be so much better that you probably won't need the walker anymore and you can get rid of it the big problem that people have is that they basically stop doing any activity inactivity is what causes balance and walking to decline the fastest. So by not using the right assistive device, whether it's a cane or a walker or, or something that makes someone feel steady, they're actually causing their balance to get worse as fast as possible. So if this, if what I'm saying hits home with you, if that describes you, if you're, if you answer yes to my question that when you use a shopping cart in the supermarket, that you walk better, I definitely encourage you to think about getting some type of assistive device that makes you feel steady so that you can walk more so that you won't need that device. Anyway, I hope this video was help helpful. If you like this video and you wanna see more like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.